really excited. I've been to a million places, but still this is my number one spot and I can't wait. I'm really excited to see Deer El Bahari, also known as Jezer Jezeru, because it's the mortuary temple of Pharaoh Hatshepsut, who was a woman. Not only was she one of the rare female pharaohs, but she was considered one of the most successful pharaohs. She was born royal, the daughter of Tutmos I, and married her half-brother, Tutmos II, who died relatively young. When he died, his son, Tutmos III, was too young to rule, so Hatshepsut was appointed his regent. After about six years, she got tired of sharing the ruling and just declared herself pharaoh. It's believed she was able to do this because she had a very strong backing from the priest of Amun. One of the things she was famous for was reestablishing trade with Punt, and she went on a successful expedition there and brought back a lot of trees and plants, one of which we can see the roots actually survived. Cow got this hunter. He can see the one of the heads here. Oh, yeah. yes. The hatoric heads here mm -hmm. on top of the pillars there. We saw these. So we're in Hatshepsut's temple. This is the temple of Hathor. The Hathor Chapel sits at the southern end of the second level colonnade. Originally, it had its own entrance ramp and a hippostyle hall with 12 of the Hathor headed columns. There are also a number of depictions of Hatshepsut in this chapel, one of her suckling on a cow's udder and another of her dancing for Hathor. The Anubis Chapel sits on the northern end of the second level colonnade. We can see the god Anubis with all of the different offerings being presented to him. In the next niche, we will see Tuthmosis III, He's offering wine to the god Socaris, who is a sun god. In this niche, there was at one time a picture of Hatshepsut giving an offering to Anubis, but all of the pictures of Hatshepsut have been chiseled off. The main suspects are Tuthmosis III, who is probably not very happy that she usurped his reign, but other people have said it was possibly Akhenaten that came back and also chiseled off the pictures of Hatshepsut. This next painting is also of Tuthmosis III, and we can see all of the offerings that he is making to Anubis. The Punt Colonnade shows depictions of the expedition to Punt, which is known as modern day Somalia. The expedition was obviously a great success as we can see all of the depictions shown on the reliefs. First we see the Egyptians leaving in two boats and then their arrival in Punt where they sent a small force of soldiers. The soldiers weren't necessary as we also see the king of Punt raising his hands in greetings to the Egyptians. There are some really neat depictions of donkeys bringing the gifts. We can also see pictures of the fish in the sea down below. But one that has fascinated historians is the image of the king's of Punt's wife, who is shown as being extremely obese. Normally the Egyptians stylized everyone to look exactly the same, but they went out of their way to show her as she was. Some say this is because she had elephantitis, but most likely she was just a well-fed queen. The next relief shows the potted myrrh trees that were brought back from Punt and the Egyptians planting them. It was known that there was a great garden in the front of Dar al-Bahari. Many of the plants were brought back from the land of Punt.
Walking through the central doorway, we go through a courtyard and back to a doorway which leads to the sanctuary of a moon. The sanctuary was cut into the living rock and appointed so that it lines up with Hatshepsut's tomb in the Valley of the Kings. During the Ptolemaic period, this sanctuary was rebuilt and it was dedicated to Imhotep and Amenhotep. We can see that all of the images of Hatshepsut were chiseled off and replaced with images of Tutmosis III. This is the inner courtyard of Queen Hatshepsut's temple. Amazingly enough, there are still some colors that you can see even on the outside of the temple, which is completely exposed to the elements. I bet it was really amazing in its day. Leaving Hatshepsut's temple, which was pretty amazing. It was beautiful. It's just really, really hot. The sun is blisteringly just beating down on us. On my way back to meet the group, I am. Um, I'm not sure what time I was supposed to be back. I hope I'm not late. I even see Bruce, who's always last. So I have a terrible feeling I'm late. Which is shocking because it's all so blazingly hot. We call this running the gauntlet. As we're leaving every place, you're just completely swarmed. And we just practically run. We took a quick stop to check out the Colossi of Memnon. There's really not much else here. The Colossi of Memnon are the remnants to what was the entrance to Omenhotep III's mortuary temple. We can see we've got some tourists over here doing an interesting pose. The statues were named by the Greeks after Memnon, who was a hero of the Trojan War, because the statues used to sing in the morning. What happened in 27 BC, there was an earthquake that cracked the statues and they collapsed. After the earthquake, the statues would sing in the morning. For over 2,000 years, they thought that the statues were magical. But in the modern era, they tried to repair the statues and when they filled in the cracks, the singing stopped. 
So it was realized that the dew collected in the cracks and when the sun rose, the heat would expand and make a singing noise.